name's Stanley Maroney. For those of you who don't know who I am, the announcements this morning, um, the nursery is available. Uh, if you have a child in need, uh, birth to preschool age. Uh, if you don't know where that's at, let us know. We'll be glad to, to help you find that. Uh, it is located, if you go out the, this left-hand door, uh, it's just the first hallway on your left. Uh, the kids can move to Kids Central during uh, the song before the sermon. Uh, if you will, just exit through the right rear door uh, of the sanctuary. Uh, Senior Sunday will be Mon uh, May, Monday, uh, May 22nd, uh, rec recognizing our graduating uh, seniors this year. Uh, May 22nd is also the church picnic, uh, weather permitting. Uh, it'll be at 2.30 at Camp Sumatonga by the lake. Um, and I'm going to turn the minute over for the ministry room to Mitchell. Good morning. Good morning. So this morning for our ministry moment, I thought that it would only be appropriate for us to talk a little bit about Mother's Day. Um, and so in order to do that, one of the things that we wanted to do is with the help of our kids and our youth to pass out some roses. Um, so for the kids and the youth in the service, y'all can make your way back there to the back uh, where Miss Laura is and um, get our roses that we have to hand out to all of our mothers. Uh, we wanted to, wanted to take a minute in our service to, um, to recognize and, and celebrate all of y'all. Um, hopefully, uh, today is an easy day for you, a day when you can relax and be uh, given some of the gifts and the pampering that you deserve as mothers and that you've earned through all of the wonderful things that you've done, not only for uh, a lot of us here, but for people outside of these walls. Um, while everybody is giving out uh, the roses, one of the things that I wanted to do was uh, share a Mother's Day prayer that one of my uh, seminary friends uh, has written and has sent around to uh, a bunch of different churches and a bunch of different pastors to use um, on this Mother's Day. So while our roses are being handed out, uh, I'd like to take this time to uh, share that prayer with y'all. So let's pray. God of life and of love, we give you thanks for this new day. We give you thanks for the beautiful weather outside and for the cool breeze in the air. We're grateful, God, for all the ways that your presence has made known to us in great and in small ways, whereby we are reminded of your steadfast love for us. On this day we of celebrating your love, we give you thanks for those who have given us life. Though we may call you Father, let us not forget how often mothers embody your steadfast and relentless love. We praise you, God, for your gift of motherly love, both gentle and fierce, both strong and humble, both kind and true. For mothers who have joined you in heaven and whom we miss dearly this day, we give you thanks. For mothers who work day and night to raise and care for their children, we give you thanks. We also remember those mothers who labor at this task alone. May we, your church, remember to uphold all of our families through our life together. For the mothers who have lost a child and must carry on, we ask for your mercy. May we all sustain these mothers in their time of need and answer your call to reach out to them in, a compa in compassion and love. For women who are new mothers and those who are expecting children but are not quite there yet, we praise you, God, for the joy and anticipation of new life. Grant that we never forget our duty to uphold these growing families, that in our shared life together we may all hear the call to be your disciples in this world. For all the women who longed for but have never had children of their own, we give you thanks. For we know that these women have been living examples of your love and grace as they have answered the call to nurture and care for others. Today, God, we stand with mothers around the world who have watched their children grow, flourish, be nurtured, and make impacts in this world. We thank you for their presence in their lives and the things that they've taught them. We lift to you the spirits of all of the mothers, not only here today, but around the world, even the ones that we'll never know personally. We praise your name and lift all of them, those who we've mentioned, those left unmentioned, as we join together in prayer and remember those who have taught us how to live and taught us how to live well. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship together this morning. Set your rule and reign in our hearts. 
people said. Amen. You may be seated.
you stand and sing with us? There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is alone in your presence Lord. Holy Spirit you're welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. 
redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died That stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not need shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me Happy Mother's Day. You are all welcome. You're welcome. I, I, I can remember this, this one thing, and it almost brought me to tears while we were singing. I had to be careful and get me a Kleenex real quick. Um, my life started off at three years old going into foster homes, and my mother would always be there on the holidays to, to visit, you know, so we could always depend on her to be there to kind of pick us up and take us for a day and now and again but there was one thing that that she always made sure of no matter where we were she had a prerequisite for foster homes and she had a prerequisite for my father when he took me too they will go to church they will be in church every sunday now granted when we got a little bit older we kind of snuck by that a little bit me and my brother but that is where my foundation came from it was her prerequisite for no matter where we were uh, parents are partners with the lord if they're not then they miss a lot of power and a lot of ability that they could have but all should be even though mother's day is not necessarily a religious holiday or a spiritual observant in origin the bible clearly contains evidence that motherhood and parenthood are God's training ground for good Christian values. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen, indeed. Let, let's start off the way we always start off. Let's have a prayer. Um, dear Father, we just approach your throne this morning on behalf of the mothers whom you've entrusted with the care of your most precious little ones. 
We thank you for creating each mom with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self each mom gives for their children, for the late nights and for the busy hands, always washing, wiping, scrubbing, mixing, baking, stirring, hugging, patting, disciplining, holding, writing, erasing, painting, and pouring out all their love. We thank you for the gift of time that moms give for their kids. Whether it's a stay-at-home mom, working mom, single mom, surrogate moms, and moms who are, are a combination of all of those things. We thank you for their flexibility, for their tirelessness, for their perseverance, and for their devotion. We, we pray that you give each mom strength. Help her to see in every mundane task the eternal the cosmic significance of what she does, the, the great power and love that you place in motherhood. Help each one of them to understand that the, the most radical, world-changing events it may just be happening anonymously right there in their homes. We ask that you be their daily bread, their living water, their source of spiritual, physical strength. We pray that the same grace that flowed from the Father to the Son to us in salvation will flow from the mothers to their children, Lord. Help each mother to rest in the knowledge that they are the best stewards of their children. And may each mother find rest in you always. Most of all, Lord, on this day in which we honor mothers, may we love and cherish the special women who have borne us who have nurtured us, who have prayed for our well-being. We celebrate this Mother's Day as it was originally intended, as a day of your peace and your love. May our hearts overflow with gratitude for you who formed and knitted each one of us in our mother's womb. Amen. Samuel is the one I picked for today. Um, I've preached a lot of different versions of sermons that have to do with mothers on Mother's Day. It's always one of the most important days of preaching to me. I always want to bring you my A game, my best sermon. Of course, it's not easy to do that day, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. So 1 Samuel 1, 26 through 28, Hannah said, Oh my Lord, as surely as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood beside you here praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my requests, which I asked him. Therefore, I have also dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord, and they worship the Lord there. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <sighs> Guys, I've heard this nearly my whole life. Parents have frequently become the, the favorite whipping posts for psychiatrists, psychologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, clergy, truant officers, school principals, just about everywhere. If little Billy goes a step astray, we can blame it on his parents because they made some mistakes along the way, right? Let me ask just a question. How many of you parents have made some mistakes along the way? Woo, I guess so. Just one or two, <laughs> right? Just one or two. You know, if Susie gets caught with something naughty, it's because her mother dyes her hair and she smokes cigarettes, right? Is that the way it is? If, if Junior runs into somebody with his tricycle, it's probably because his, his, his dad is known to have a heavy foot. He likes to put the pedal to the metal. It's his fault that that happened. <laughs> Just about every time some interested group meets to try to solve the community's problems, someone suggests that the problem, the real blame, can be clearly traced back to the parents and, and what they didn't do or what they did do along the way. Uh, one sometimes gets the impression that if we could just find a way to eliminate the parents, well, the world would be truly a better place and the kids would be just fine, you know? Truly, parents regularly take it on the chin. There's no doubt about it. We've gotten used to it. We take it. 
because we have the joy of our children and we have the blessing of their lives to see. So we just take it, right? Someone would have said that new parents especially are so ill-equipped and inadequate for the task of child-rearing that their first child should be plastic. <laughs> Thus we've come up with giving them an egg to take care of or a dog or a cat first, you know, hoping that maybe in that process they'll learn a little something. <laughs> At least we get too far down this road and start ridiculing parents and, you know, debasing Mother's Day and motherhood and parenting in general, which I would never do. Let's not forget, even though Jesus' mission was soul-saving in its purpose and he had no time to waste on earthly concerns here, one of his main concerns while he was on the cross is so strong that it pierced through his incredible pain and suffering was his love and concern for his mother. When Jesus saw his mother there in John 19, 26, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here's your son. He didn't want to leave her without a son. He cared that deeply. So know this, it is from our Lord himself that we can take the example to pay special tribute to our mothers, to our mothers who have partnered with the Lord our whole lives to bring us up as godly people. And regardless of how we uh, came to be parents or children, our children are gifts of God. And it's by God's purpose and design that as parents, especially mothers today, that we embrace this one true fact. We are partners with the Lord in the rearing of our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. If we keep that thought steadfast, then our kids will grow up to be okay, won't they? Everything will be just fine. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, is an example of a woman who wanted to be a parent so badly that it seems she could think of little else. In fact, she prayed so fervently to become a mother that the priest Eli came out and he thought she was drunk because she probably was moved in the spirit and going for it, you know? And he accused her of having too much to drink. And God did answer Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel 1.20 with a yes. And she did not forget she was a partner with the Lord when she became a mother. She named her child Samuel, which means I af I've asked him of the Lord. And Hannah didn't think giving her son a godly name was enough. She didn't think she had exhausted her part of the partnership. As soon as Samuel was old enough, she took him to the high priest and said, I am dedicating him to you, Lord. As long as he lives, he shall belong to the Lord. You know, there are still many Hannahs to be found in this world today that know how important it is to bring their kids up with the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the gospel that God has given us. In spite of the high abortion rates and regardless of the increasing number of couples who are saying they're just not going to have kids at all, people on this earth are still thrilled to be parents to the point that many of them adopt even beyond the kids that they have and especially if they can't have any. Being a parent is still something very cherished and loved. Believers and unbelievers alike have the desire to marry, have children, care for them. However, it's, it's normally only the believers who have the vision that they are partners with God and that they are actually sharing their children with the Lord, that it's a shared experience and that we're grateful that God is sharing them with us. When believing parents realize that the partnership they can pass on um, a, a glimpse of the Lord to their children... For example, it's, it's safe to say that most of us got our first glimpse of the Lord from our mothers. Anybody want to attest to that? Give me an amen, raise a hand. Amen, our mothers, right? Matter of fact, the Methodist church, I could tell you, would not exist right now if it weren't for the women in the church. It would not. They were the ones that took the reins when it fell apart and said, let's build it back up. United Methodist women... They're the bomb. 
I'm telling you the truth. You know, in most cases, the Holy Spirit of God used our mothers to teach us to give, to love, to pray. Paul urged young Timothy to hold fast to the faith that his grandmother Lois passed on to his mother Eunice, who in turn passed it on to Paul himself. This is how important our mothers are in our lives. When Paul was a prisoner because of his Christian faith, he warned Timothy that he would have to suffer too, but he was sure he could endure it because Paul wrote from a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which led to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. That's what it says in 2 Timothy 3.15. He's talking about the knowledge that his grandmother and mother passed on to him. Right? And probably every every mother has looked at her child and seen all sorts of dreams. You know, mental images of the child growing up to be a, a president, a doctor, pastor, maybe. Some type of professional athlete. Right? An accomplished musician. But there's no greater future you can have for your children than that time that you're with them in their bedroom and you've got them to kneel beside the bed and for the first time, you teach them how to talk to God and you tell them that they can do it anytime they want. There's nothing as rewarding as that. Nothing I've seen on this earth than teaching my child to talk to her Heavenly Father. Hopefully, we all see, of all things we can give our children, that the one thing that can help them the most is to know Jesus Christ. That's what parents do. To know Him personally, as a Savior, as a shepherd, as a friend, as their Lord. Beyond that, of all the values and valuables you can bequeath your children, what good would a million dollars do, or even a million dollar personality do? If someday, when Jesus comes to call this age to a close and takes you to himself in heaven, you look around and you don't see your children, what good would it do? That's why the Bible states that training in godliness has eternal value. For many of us, and hopefully for you too, the greatest comfort of being a partner with the Lord lies in this reality. He takes all of our sins and shortcomings upon himself. And we share in his perfection. That's what the gospel means. It's the short, quick message of it. Just as we said that the first child should be plastic because parents get no time to practice, nor are there any pre-game warm-ups for parenthood, God, in his love and mercy, has given us a way out an option, right? In his love and mercy, he takes our failures as a parent, as a person, and lays them upon his perfect son. There's not one parent here present this morning who does not count on the Lord's forgiveness, even in our tasks as a parent. True? Consider for your comfort, that if Mary and Joseph, who were not perfect, modeled their parenthood with distractions and moves and difficulties, that we can't expect ourselves to be perfect either. I mean, that chosen of God couple had a perfect child to work with, and they still, no doubt, had their moments, didn't they? I mean, well, let's just take one example. Remember the temple in Jerusalem? They're two days down the road and realize Jesus isn't with them. You know, I mean, a little forgiveness, right? And each of us as parents, we deserve that too. Jesus was their savior too, by the way. Mom and dads. He died on the cross for their sins and shortcomings and yes, for the failures and the blind spots of all us as parents today. He too went to the cross.
for us. There are no perfect parents, even though Hannah gave her child a godly name and gave him back to the Lord. She was far from perfect. If you really kind of read on into the Old Testament, you soon find out that that wonderful godly mother of Han- mother Hannah, she was jealous and did some petty bickering and a couple other things that weren't too <clears throat> godly-like, you know. And she had her own imperfections. But Hannah gave her child and her motherhood over to God. She knew where to reach to get help. So if any of you are struggling this morning with your parenthood, your grandparenthood, with your lives, know where to reach. Know to reach for Jesus Christ and get a helping hand where you need it. Who is good and perfect? Who delights in showing mercy? This is what the psalmist writes about God. And God only. So, parents, I'm going to say this too. Don't expect your kids to be perfect either. It ain't going to happen. I'm pretty sure. You know, I've reared one too. And a couple of grands and a couple of great grands on the way too. They have a savior also. There's a conference of clergy people and one of the presenters told this story about himself. I'd like to share it with you this morning. I'll never forget how I fussed over little Ned. Over how he ate and drank and drooled while we were in the car on long trips. His mother thought eating in route was a, a good way to pass the time for him. To this day, I still kid about a car being a travel kitchen and a sort of mobile high chair for Ned. The mess he made in the car upset me very much. And, and I made certain both he and his mother were aware of my position on this issue. Let me tell you something. He went on. The day came when I would go out to the car just to look for a stain or two from the grape juice which he had spilled on the seat. And I would praise God for that stain. I also inspected the little tears in his portage chair made on the seat. I rejoiced in that also. You see, Ned died suddenly at the age of four. And tears would go down my cheek as I inspected the damage that he made with his eating in the car and his drinking. Nowadays, I often say to the Lord silently, Lord, let him spill grape juice and apple juice and orange juice all over the seat. I would surely give that up if I could just have him back again. He could even reach over the front seat, pour it on my head. I wouldn't even care, Lord. If I could just have him back once again. You see, God does not give us children to make them perfect. But he gives us children to love them and to bring them up in the knowledge of his love and his grace. Children, don't expect your parents to be perfect either. I know sometimes they act like they are and they're trying to get you to do the right thing. Remember, as difficult as it may be to imagine... Guys, they were once kids too. And really, now they're just big kids that have grown up. They still make all kinds of mistakes and do all kinds of things that are a little difficult to deal with. See, there's only one perfect parent that we know of. He is the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our Father too. He had but one child who was a boy. And yes... He was and remained the only begotten child of God. And the Father gave up that only child on the cross for our sins. For all of our sins. The sins of our parents and the sins of our kids. For all of them. Let's resolve today to acknowledge that God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is the only perfect parent. Can I get an amen? Yes, I can. Now is the time to dedicate ourselves to being partners with Him in our parenting. And many of you have grown children just that way.
I've met them. And I am proud to be a part of your church. You see, God needs more Hannahs. Folks who have the wisdom and the grace to be partners with God in their parenthood. Let me start to summarize here and get to the end of this. Even though Mother's Day is not a religious holiday or a spiritual observance in origin, the Bible certainly gives us evidence that motherhood and parenthood are God's training ground for good Christian values. Parenthood always has to be a partnership with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And our mothers taught us that truth. With every act of love that they shared, they taught us that truth, that Jesus is in this relationship. In the Old Testament, Hannah served as a model for how our faith is to be communicated and passed on. She certainly took serious her role in the spiritual nurturing and training of her son and demonstrated how mothers in particular are to be partners with the Lord in the rising and raising of their children. Let me share the, the last scripture that I have with you in, in a short story. Deuteronomy 5.16 Honor, respect, obey, and care for your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that your days on the earth may be prolonged and so they, that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. See, my parents were separated when I was three years old. And my brother and I, we spent all of our childhood up into our teens in and out of foster homes. And I'm going to tell you, I had more mothers than I can even express. In all of those years and all of those moves, becoming a part of different families here and different families there, uh, there was a grand, consistent theme in my life. Women of God mothering me. All through my years. I have had the love and care of my biological mother, my foster mothers, my spiritual mothers, my stepmothers, my teachers, my church mothers. The truth is, I love my mother dearly and I miss her. But there's more to my story than just her. My sister mothered us when we were little kids. My Aunt Betty, my first foster home, well, my second foster home. My foster sisters, I had foster sisters along the way that showed me God's love and grace. I had teachers upon teachers in high school and grade school that just took me under their wing and loved me. I had girlfriends, mothers taking care of me. Pam's mother, my mom, taking care of me. Students, Christian women through the years, and so many other women along the way in my life have embraced, become the minds and the hearts, the very spirit of Jesus to mother me when I was in need. I had this blessing in my life, always. I understand that not all mothers are conventional. I understand that not all mothers give birth because I have been mothered by many. I understand this probably more than a lot of people. <laughs> so if you're wondering, if you get to know my personality and get to know who I am and you've, you've found in me that, that I can be kind, that I can be loving and understanding, any of those good things that you've found in me, now you know why you found them. Today, I want to thank God for every one of them that helped me come to this point in my life to be a man of God who's kind, forgiving and understanding, loving, who intends to do good for all. They've given me that. So I'll leave you. I hope I didn't make you too weepy. Okay, just I've got a lot of love in my heart for a lot of women. And I didn't even mention the fact that when I start acting like a child, my wife mothers the heck out of me. Okay? <laughs> Amen, guys? Yeah, I know. 
I know. Just wanted to mention it. Anyways, I hope you were able to glean something from that this morning. May it be so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I have the ushers come forward and the band come up? As a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our tithes and gifts to the Lord as an act of worship. Holy Father, I do ask you to bless the giving of these tithes by the power of your Spirit in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Sing praise to Him and Him alone. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Sing. I know sometimes we hold back thinking we're going to praise the person instead of the power, but that's not what's happening here at this church. We're praising the power behind the person, and that is Jesus Christ, and he can't help himself. That was funny, David. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You guys know how I feel about you. I pray that God is in every moment of your time, everywhere you are, that he's in your rising in the morning and you're going to sleep at night. I pray he's to your right, your left, in front of you, behind you. I pray he is everywhere with you and every time. And I pray you hear his voice calling out to you, my child, my child, I love you. May that be so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.